Oh, this clean tone is going to be epic. <laughs> Play this back. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Jason. Welcome to Three Minute Tutorials, a show where I get to the point as fast as possible. So this tutorial is gonna help you figure out how to stop your audio from clipping while you're recording. I had two instances on the first record that I recorded and man, it was a pain to fix. So tip number one, obviously check your levels before you start recording. This sounds fairly obvious, but some of the mistakes people make are they'll do their check by going. Okay, that sounds pretty good. And then when they hit record, so try to get your levels at the actual volume you're going to be playing at. If you're recording with someone else, this isn't that big of a deal because you have somebody monitoring the DAW while you're actually playing. For example, I have my drums in the other room and my computer is in here, so it's a bit of a pain for me to run back and forth to be able to do that. I have started using the remote app in Logic to make this a little bit easier, but it's still a bit of a pain if you're doing it yourself. So make sure you check your levels and you play at a max volume that you would want to be playing. Once you hit that max volume, try to add 20% to it without obviously destroying any of your equipment and then you'll know. So as a general rule for myself, I target negative six dB as the peak I want going into my DAW and your mileage may vary, but you can check out the actual waveform as well. And as another general rule, I like to have some headroom, which is basically just space in the track that when you add processing to it, it's not gonna clip that volume. So I like to have a waveform that is about 50% of the height of the track. So there's 25% of the space up at the top, 25% at the bottom, looks like a nice healthy waveform. And then generally negative six dB is the top I like to peak at. So tip number two is if you have an audio interface that has a pad function, so for example, my Scarlett Focusrite 18i20 has a negative 10 dB pad on it, so that will not clip the signal. So even if I'm coming in, you know, pretty hot, it's going to reduce the gain on that so I don't end up getting clipping. So check your audio interface manual to see if you have it. One thing to look for is there are some audio interfaces that have a clip signal on it, but it's just a light. It doesn't actually have a circuit in there that's gonna limit that. It's just gonna show you when you're clipping. Tip number three, suppose you don't have an interface that has padding on it that will automatically deal with, you know, reducing that gain if you're coming in a little bit too hot. You can use input processing and this will work pretty much in every DAW. The concept is pretty simple. Instead of recording directly to a track, you're recording through an auxiliary bus. So your interface is sending the signal to an auxiliary bus that has a compressor plug-in on it, and that compressor is going to be compressing the signal. You can add a limiter to it, and then you're going to be routing that signal to the input of the actual guitar track. So you're gonna have two tracks, potentially three tracks, depending on which DAW that you're using, and that is going to allow you to prevent your audio from clipping. There's pros and cons with that approach. The pro is you'll never have something that's clipped. The con is obviously you lose a bit of processing flexibility depending on your compressor settings. So I'm gonna put my compressor settings down at the bottom. You just want a very, very light amount of compression that doesn't destroy the dynamics, but also doesn't allow you to clip your audio signal when you're coming in. So I hope you enjoyed this short video. I learned this lesson the hard way on our first record where I had two parts that clipped pretty hard and I had to do some magic to get rid of that stuff. Remember to like and subscribe. These episodes come out every Tuesday and Thursday. I'll see you on the next one.